In this video, I would like to introduce you to OPC communication. Therefore, I will use the OPC toolbox within MATLAB Simulink. For OPC communication, we need both an OPC server and an OPC client. Unfortunately, the OPC toolbox within MATLAB does not provide any server capabilities. Luckily, on the other hand, OPC simulation servers are freely available on the internet. For instance, the Matricon OPC simulation server. We can freely download this OPC server from the internet. If we look for the OPC servers and the downloads provided by Matricon, we can see many OPC servers for many different devices, but here for this video, we look for the OPC simulation server. If you have a login for this website, you can use it. If you do not have a login already, you crea can create one for free. Once you're logged in, you can download and install the OPC simulation server. If you install this software, you can use the Matricon OPC Explorer to get familiar with the possibilities of the Matricon OPC server. Here we can see the OPC simulation server. We can connect to it by double clicking. And then, by adding tags, we can browse through all the possible data that is available on this simulation OPC server. For instance, there are some random values in different data types. There are square waves in different data types, triangle waves, sawtooth waves, etc. Now that we know how to browse through this data available on the OPC server, we can go to MATLAB and start writing our code to log certain data from the MATLAB software, which will be the OPC client as shown in the slide. First of all, we clear our workspace and our view. We will do some data logging, so we will choose a sample time, in this case 0 0.2 seconds, and a number of samples to log, in this case 50. The first thing we need to do is to connect to a OPC server. This is done by making an OPC DA object. We will connect to the local host, as you can see here in the Matricon OPC Explorer. We will use the name local host for the OPC server that is on the same computer as the OPC client in this case. So we give this property to the command and the name of the Matricon OPC simulation server you can read here in the matricon opc explorer so we will use that name as well and of course we need to connect to this opc server the next thing we will do is create a group which could be used to add certain items, certain data points we want to follow, we want to track or change. So we will add a group to our current object DA, which is the object connected to the OPC server. 
we call it demo group and we will use this demo group and then we have to add items to this group these items have certain IDs to know which IDs to use we can browse the OPC Explorer and see how the different items are called. We will use triangle waves of type real 8 and a random value of let's say type real 4. So if we add the items we have to add the correct names we found in the OPC Matricon Explorer. And then we will add these items to the OPC group we just made some lines above. Then we have to give some settings for the data logging. This is still related to the same OPC group. We will set the update rate which is defined by the sample time declarated at the beginning of the program and then we have some records to acquire in other words these are the number of samples then we will do the logging by starting the OPC group and wait until the logging is done. Of course, the logging time will depend on the sample time and the number of samples you set it. And then finally, we want to get the data Therefore, we use the command get data from the OPC group and we will import the data as double values. When we use this command get data, we get a lot of different arrays. First of all, of all we get the IDs of the locked data, we get the actual values, we get the quality, which is always included in OPC communication and which is an indication for the communication quality. We get timestamps for each value and we get an event time. And finally, we want to clean everything up by disconnecting from the OPC server and delete our OPC object. If we save this file, we can run it. We will be busy for a while, depending on the number of samples and the sample time. If the logging is done, we get the logging values in an array with two columns, one column for the random values and one column for the sawtoothed values. And we can plot them if we want by using the regular MATLAB commands.
and then we see the sawtooth that is locked from the OPC simulation server by the OPC client, which was in this case a MATLAB program.